So, hi everyone. Um, my name is Bob Cladhout. Um, I'm from the company Aluxi, <coughs> and I will be uh, presenting um, the way how we solved, um, of our, how we're trying to solve uh, in generating an IoT platform um, for the Aluxi solution we are, um, we are, we are creating. Um, and let's get started right ahead. So, as I said, my name is Bob Cladhout. Uh, I'm a Master of Appliance, uh, Science in Applied Engineering and Electronics ICT, and I um, got, got graduated in 2011. And I started working for Aluxi in 2018, so uh, roughly working one year for Aluxi right now. Um, and uh, when I started working for Aluxi, uh, it was my first time ex professional experience with uh, Java, with containers, with Kubernetes, with OpenShift. So uh, let's say I'm uh, just a new kid on the block and trying to figure out everything. Um, this is my, uh, the talk I'm, go I'm going to give today is about my experience from the first year, um, what I experienced, how, how, uh, how I came across some things, uh, how we're trying to solve it and how we came, or what the actual uh, architecture is we're using right now. Uh, let me give you say, say a small word about Aluxi as well. Uh, Aluxi is the yellow logo on all the adopters um, page right now. Uh, we, are, we are using uh, a lot of IoT projects, uh, including Dito, Hono, and Vorto, as seen here on the adopters page. Um, we are a small company. Uh, we were founded in 2017, and we were a spin-off of the University of Antwerp, and we are headquartered in uh, Antwerp as well, in Belgium. Um, the special thing about our um, company is that um, we are not focused on the IoT platform. We are for focused on integrating or creating a vertical. So we are trying to create a solution rather than just creating an, uh, an IoT platform, which is uh, an important difference because, for example, we, have, um, we are specialized and we are mainly focused on the wireless communication, for example, Dash 7 and uh, LoRa. Um, there is a lot of expertise in our company. Uh, one of the founders is uh, also a professor in the university and is working solely on the, on the wireless communication. We have three embedded developers working mainly for the wireless communication. So the focus of our company is actually uh, rather on the wireless side of the, of the solution. Um, the only one backend back developer is standing in front of you. Uh, I'm just the only one. Uh, and we're obviously looking for colleagues. Um, to be honest, um, this month, I think we found someone. Uh, he's coming over from Portugal, and uh, we will be with two uh, next month. But uh, besides that, we are still looking for colleagues. So if you're looking for a job, come and visit me. Um, then some technicalities. In 2018, we raised two million uh, euros uh, to get things started, um, and we are just um, yeah we have we are we working with companies such as Dow, BASF, BASF in Ludwigshaven as well, uh, NG Fabricom, Solvay, and others. Um, I don't, uh, also, we are a proud contributor to Eclipse Hono and Eclipse Tuto. Um, Vorto is not on our list yet, um, but yeah, we will try to contribute as much as possible if, that's, uh, if we find the time and if we have, yeah, uh, don't that have any, anything other to do uh, regarding customers and, uh, and stuff like that. Then a little bit more about uh, what we call the Aluxi Pulse. Um, so let me first get to, um, to explain uh, what vertical solution we are trying, or what vertical problem we're trying to, trying to solve with our uh, solution. Uh, and in order to solve it, we have created a sensor. We call it the Aluxi, Aluxi Pulse. It has uh, temperature sensors. It has a mechanism um, sensor. It has vibration sensors. It uh, is able to position itself and in, in detect, detect the orientation. It has buttons, it has LED sensors, uh, LED um, lights, so quite everything to, to, to make sure that we have a versatile sensor, which we can use in multiple uh, scenarios. And the first scenario we're trying to solve is uh, the positioning of manual, manual valves. Um, and that goes for quarter valves, uh, multi-turn valves, and um, yeah, we're trying to solve these problems over here. Um, so we are trying to um, obtain valve statistics, we are trying to receive alerts, we're trying to be actually receiving alerts when, for example, it's manipulate, manipulated when it's not supposed to be. Uh, we, will, we are trying to ensure that the valves are in the correct position and stuff like that. And uh, actually, we're trying to uh, make sure that every customer who has a problem is able to solve the problems with, um, with this sensor. Of course, the problems cannot only uh, be solved with, uh, by using the sensor. We, have, um, we need to use an IoT platform, and uh, that's what we are here for. And these are a couple of uh, examples on uh, which problems we're trying to solve as well. So the maintenance progress monitoring is, for example, um, when a, a chemical plant goes into shutdown, they are trying to demantle, de de demantle yeah, 
um, the whole uh, plant and they are moving it so it can get cleaned, it can get um, fixed and they, they, yeah, do a lot of stuff we don't know about. But to track, to track all these, these devices and to track, make sure that they, they can keep track of all the yeah, of all the devices and make sure that it's not getting a mess in, in chaos, we can, we can offer a solution uh, to, to make sure uh, everything gets in place and the, the problems, for example, evolve, not getting back to the plant, are detected b before they're starting up instead of just at the minute they're, they're wanting to start up. An important one over here is the question mark. Um, the question mark is uh, mostly important for our uh, IoT platform. We want to make and create an IoT platform which solves this vertical problem but also is able to solve problems we do not know about. So other customers can just raise and make their own, have their own problems in trying to solve using our IoT platform. Now the important part, the, uh, the IoT platform itself. Uh, this is our main setup, uh, just a global overview. So we have the sensor, we have private or public networks. Uh, the private network is, for example, our own gateway using LoRaWAN or the Dash 7. Dash 7 is a uh, technology created uh, on the University of Antwerp, and it's also an open source technology. And then we have the public networks, LoRaWAN, Sigfox, for example, using the public uh, LoRaWAN server uh, providers. They communi all communicate via the, uh, through the, uh, or to the Alexi IoT platform, and the Alexi IoT platform on its turn um, communicates to, for example, our application, uh, our Alexi application, the manual valve position, as we call it, and then the device management or even other customer customer system integrations. What do we need for our IoT platform? What are the requirements? Um, most customers request an on-premise installation, uh, which is a really hard one. Uh, in the next slide, or in the coming next slide, um, there is an overview of some of the existing IoT platforms, and uh, a lot of them um, are falling off the list because of the on-premise installation. It's a really important uh, feature that we require. Uh, our customers require it. We do not require it. We would like to pr uh, um, install in the cloud and just have all our customers in the cloud. But our customers demand that we install on premise, and that's uh, yeah, a very important one. Besides that, we want to run it in multi cloud. Some some users, uh, some customers want to run it in our own cloud. Some users want to run it in a hybrid cloud. Um, very important as well for our cloud installation. We want it to be multi tenant and or multi instance and multi instance. And then a very important line for this uh, EclipseCon as well. We want do, we do not want to reinvent the wheel. We want to reuse what's what's there already. Um, we want to use open standards. We want to use open source as much as possible. The main advantage advantages for this is towards our customer. Say for example, Aloxy changes root or or changes uh, yeah. Um, for some reason, we, want, we do not want to use the open source anymore. When we install a, an installation at the customer, the customer can, for example, um, make sure to have it supported by other companies using also those open standards, or can even get people trained to use the open standards and use them. Uh, we want it to be scale, scalable and fault tolerant, of course. We want it to be extensible. We want it to have an open gateway and a device API exactly for the same reasons, um, so that the customer doesn't have to be using a black box and just can use uh, whatever is there. Um, we wanted to have an open application API exactly for the same reason. So a lot of open in this slide, um, but yeah, that's the main reason why we're here. That's the main reason why we're open source uh, using, and uh, yeah, we're at EclipseCon. So this is uh, a comparison of uh, a lot of IoT platforms, or, or some of the IoT platforms, uh, of, of which, the, as I said before, the on-premise line, the first line is a very important one. Um, and you see that already Siemens Mindsphere, for example, or the managed cloud providers in, um, are already uh, falling off the list. Uh, Thingsboard and Mainflix were on the list, but uh, lack maturity and uh, off-the-shelf um, yeah, uh, capabilities, for example. So uh, that's the reason why we came for Eclipse IoT, and within the Eclipse IoT, we chose for Hono and Ditto, uh, and we are very pleased with the choice. Um, so, yeah. Let's continue and have uh, somewhat of a dive in uh, into the IoT platform. Um, before I started working at Aloxy, this was a state. Um, and you have to know, for example, uh, you have to know that uh, Aloxy is mainly focused on the verticals, so they are trying to solve a solution. And the solution was solved by doing this. We had some proof of concepts, they were working. Uh, there was a main focus on the wireless communication, main focus on the gateways, on the sensor, and they all developed this using a simple backend application, which just consisted of an MQTT connection towards the Aloxy platform, 
which uh, used to be Mosquito as well, uh, the, the broker. And the my Alexa platform was just working in Python, consuming the messages, putting it in MongoDB and in FlexDB. And afterwards, there were some uh, consumer, uh, customer integrations, just, uh, just, uh, just as um, Modbus integrations, for example. It all was working. Nothing, uh, nothing was failing. It was, was yeah, the customers were happy. Everything was working as expected, except for the fact that if tomorrow, for example, we would uh, connect a lot of more devices and get out of the POC phase, yeah, we, we would have a problem. So we want to have it scalable. We want to have it, yeah, reliable, just like the the, the other slide I mentioned before. So that's how we came up with this. Um, this is the current situation. So now we are connecting to Hono, um, and after Hono, the, everything is communicated to Dito. Ditto is making use of Keycloak now. Um, and then we have our Aloxy MVP application, which is consuming the messages from Ditto and putting them in time scale and back in Ditto as a digital twin again. Uh, after the digital twin, we have MQP communi communication, WebSocket communication, or MQTT communication to make sure that um, the Modbus um, integrations, for example, at customer side work. And we can make sure that the data goes, flows back into the systems of the customer. All of this is running with uh, OpenShift, and our math um, is the communication layer in between every service. Then uh, we would like to have, um, we are currently working on, on this situation. Um, so we are incorporating Vorto as well. Um, and let me just go back and forth a bit and see what the differences are. So Vorto is um, coming into the picture. And then we would like to make a uh, time series API as well, uh, because currently we're using Grafana just to visualize AL data. But we, want, we also want to give the customer the, proper, the possibility to, um, to, made, to call an API to get the historical data. That's not the case right now. They just have a dash dashboard from Grafana, and that's about it. And then in between Hono and Ditto, we, were, we would like to have a normalizer somehow. Uh, and this normalizer is using Vorto. Uh, and the, the rest of the architecture is more or less the same, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. Then uh, for the ones, for the people in the room who do not know uh, the Eclipse IoT project, I will give you a brief overview of what the um, Eclipse IoT projects are, what they do, and uh, what our experience with it, and uh, if, whether or not we contribute it as well. So let's start with uh, Eclipse Hono. Eclipse Hono is, um, yeah, the, the one component which is um, responsible for connecting all devices. So we um, use this to connect uh, LoRa one, the public LoRa one server, for example. We use this to connect our own private gateway. We use this for um, HTTP communication, and it, LoRa is capable. Uh, Hono is quite capable of doing all this: multi-tenant, secure, scalable, and all of these things on the list. Uh, and we would uh, we would like to congratulate the team for um, releasing uh, version 1.0. Last week, um, it was very, yeah, it was very busy uh, on the mailing list and on the GitHub. Um, so, yeah, we would, would like to congratulate, congratulate everyone. Then, uh, Bosch and Red Hat are the most active contributors. Um, they have biweekly calls, which we follow uh, or try to follow as much as possible. Um, I personally love those calls. It gets, keeps you up to date uh, without reading all the emails or uh, following every ticket in the in the GitHub page. Uh, we can just yeah, follow everything by just calling in and uh, get to know what, uh, what's moving on and going on within the within the community. It's very mature. Uh, we have fast jitter, stack overflow, and GitHub responses. And um, yeah, they are willing willing to uh, contribute from downstream. For example, the LoRa adapter wasn't in the in the Hono update upstream uh, repository, and they contributed from downstream, which is nice because we can use it, and we are contributing to that LoRa adapter right now. And that's, those are the small contributions we uh, we did uh, to Hono. Also, we had a face-to-face -face, uh, in Berlin, which um, which was nice as well to get to know the people, just like here on EclipseCon, get to know people, make sure that uh, you're in contact with them, and uh, yeah, all good. Next phase, our next uh, component I would like to discuss is the Eclipse Ditto. Eclipse Ditto is uh, a digital twin. It is, uh, we use it mainly um, because it has uh, a standardized HTTP API and a WebSocket API ready for the customer to use. Um, so that means we just flood in, uh, uh, provide all the data to Ditto, and the customer can filter and use uh, the data as he likes. And then, um, yeah, more or less, that's it. Um, it doesn't have much talking about, or it, you can't talk about it much, but um, yeah, it does what it, what it needs to do. 
um, and we're happy to use it. Uh, we had some minor contributions on this project, a little bit less than uh, in Hono, but we had some, and uh, yeah, we're, we're still proud of it. Um, it's becoming mature. I think they're working towards uh, version 1.0 uh, right now. Um, Bosch is also the most active contributor in this, and um, currently there is no community call whatsoever, uh, but maybe it would be nice to have it, um, just to get the community going and uh, get some more contributions from other uh, companies as well. Uh, besides that, Jitter, Stack Overflow, and GitHub are also closely watched, and uh, you get fast responses as well, which is uh, a good thing from the team. Then Vorto is uh, somewhat of yeah, a different story. Um, we are not yet using Vorto that much. We are trying to, uh, but we're still uh, seeing whether it fits our needs. Um, it provides a simple language to describe every um, object. For example, if you have uh, 10 different sensors using uh, temperature, uh, then you would describe the temperature always in the same way, so that, for example, the customer, when he subscribes to a temperature sensor, it, was, it just receives the temperature always in the same way. So, uh, for example, our Aloxy Pulse is uh, sending temperature as well, but it is always it is sending it in a different way than uh, any other LoRa adapter uh, is doing. So, by using Vorto, we can normalize the data and prevent, present the uh, temperature always the same way. Um, you can share these uh, and reuse these descriptions, and it also uh, is uh, able to generate some code. Uh, as I said, it is also used by Aloxy Pulse, and yeah. Uh, as explained, only one customer needs to in uh, only the customer needs to integrate uh, how once. Is it, how is it used by Alexi Pulse? What does Alexi Pulse? Uh, so um, we are um, parsing the data in the backend server, and then uh, the Alexi Pulse uses the temperature model, for example, to uh, present its temperature just the way as an, or the, any other LoRa sensor which measures temperature. I thought Pulse was the sensor. Yeah, it is using this. Yeah, so yeah, it is poorly written. That's true. Uh, so, but the Alexi Pulse is sending data in binary way and not in a JSON way, and we are parsing that and presenting it using the Vorto model. But so that is not happening on the sensor. No, no, no. It's yeah, it's happening on the backend. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. But actually, it, it should say uh, we are we have created a Vorto model for the Alexi Pulse. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's our experience? Bosch is the most, uh, most active contributor. Uh, it has no uh, no community call right now, just like Ditto uh, might. Uh, attract new contributors when there is a uh, community call. Uh, it is not as active as the others, uh, but they are reachable by Jitter, Stack Overflow, and Hitup as well. And we currently didn't have any uh, contributions, but as I said, it's fairly new to us and we're still, still gaining some experience. Then en masse, uh, not in the Eclipse IoT group, but I think it's worth mentioning, uh, because yeah, it it's serves our needs um, for, um, for our backend application. Right now, it's messaging. It uh, provides MQP uh, uh, 1.0 um, communication. It's multi-tenant. It's, uh, it's also uh, providing some authorization. It's a pub sub request response uh, mechanism. Then Red Hat is the most active contributor in it. Um, it. There's also no community call, if I'm correct. Oh, oh if I, yeah, I'm correct. So it, but it is fast-paced. It is a uh, fast-changing uh, um, project. Um, it goes, yeah, it's, it's rather, um, some magic to me, but it's fast-paced and there are some a lot of inter inter iterations on it. And they are reachable via mailing list or IC. Not my personal preference. Uh, I rather like uh, Jitter or Stack Overflow or the, the mailing, uh, the um, Jitter or Stack Overflow indeed. And then uh, we didn't have any contributions uh, so far, but yeah, like, as I, like as I said, it's a bit of magic to me right now. Then Keycloak is also uh, used within our project, it's also an open source project, and uh, also from Red Hat, and it's an identity provider. Uh, I think most of you would know what it is. Single sign-on is uh, useful for that, and um, yeah, OAuth and uh, OpenID are the most important features to that. We use it for uh, securing our um, Ditto frontend, uh, and uh, eventually also the API calls are secured via Keycloak. Then we are not following in this community at all, uh, but it is open source, so if you want to dive in, you can. Uh, it does for now do what, what we need to do, to do um, so that's it. So that's what we're currently working on. Um, however, we are not uh, stopping after that. We will have to change some other stuff as well. 
and we will try to um, incorporate these changes. I will go back and forth a few times to just uh, let's see what changes. So Forto is um, currently um, used within the normalizer uh, in our uh, application, but we, want, we, we would love to see that the normalization of all data happens in, in Hono itself. Um, so for example, the LoRa adapter is able to, depending on from which public LoRa uh, network server it comes, to parse the data differently and to normalize the data. Maybe it's possible to have this Forto integration within Hono, so to make sure that every data coming out of Hono is normalized already. Then um, we are trying to, we are actually uh, incorporating a LoRa server in our IoT platform as well. And uh, we would love to um, incorporate Hogbit as well, uh, but we do not know whether it's, it's communicating right away with Hono or uh, via Ditto. And then IOFOG is uh, coming into the picture as well. Um, so just go back and forth once more. So here at the bottom, Hogbit, IOFOG is coming in the picture, LoRa, the LoRa server, and then Forto is uh, shifting up uh, to Hono. That's our, currently our goal, um, so we're working towards that. LoRa server is an open source implementation of the LoRa network server you're used to. So for example, uh, the Proximus LoRa server or the Digimon LoRa server, they are, are all implementations of, the, of, the, of a LoRa protocol or LoRa network server. And LoRa server IO is an open source implementation of this. And we would like to uh, place this behind Hono just to, um, yeah, to regulate the network, the LoRa network on site. And it's just in, to have a brief overview of it, it's just um, determining how uh, a sensor should send, for example. So there's a spreading factor, for example. The LoRa server determines how good the, the, um, the message came through and then says to the sensor, next time, use this spreading factor because of that, 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 that. Um, yeah, that was a brief overview of the R2 platform itself. Um, of course, we need to deploy it um, as well. For deployment, we're looking to cloud native deployment. Um, yeah, all of these, uh, <laughs> all of these, uh, these are these are all the reasons. Uh, so scalability, microservices is yeah, it's most common. Uh, you're on EclipseCon, so probably you only know a lot of these um, reasons. Um, we are following this approach, and we are also using this slide to, towards our customer because they do not uh, are not aware of all the cloud native developments. So we would like to. Uh, yeah, to incorporate this in our slides and make sure that the customer is, is with us on this and um, yeah, also follows our, our, um, our way of working. Uh, we're deploying on Kubernetes. Um, currently, we're also deploying on, uh, uh, specifically deploying on Red Hat uh, OpenShift. Kubernetes itself is a de facto standard and also um, Gartner and uh, is, is um, stating that uh, a lot of enterprises will be using Kubernetes in the coming years. So yeah, we do not doubt this and we are just following the, the mainstream and using Kubernetes as well. Uh, it's a standard way to package and deploy our applications and uh, we will probably, if we use, for example, IOFOC in the future, uh, it might be uh, that we will be using Kubernetes just to extend to the edge as well uh, on our gateways. Then, um, as I said before, we, an, a, more to, an, a really important part of our IoT platform is that um, we would like to deploy on-premise as well. Uh, and uh, for this, we have a slide provided, um, which is um, more or less um, comparing the different uh, solutions we have. So it goes from on-premise uh, just until uh, cloud-managed multi-tenant situation. And we would like to give the customer the opportunity to choose which, is, which fits best their needs. So uh, for the ones who are really scared of cloud, we have, we have an on-premise installation. We try to um, avoid this as much as possible, but some customers just want, don't want it and demand an on-premise installation. But they have to be aware that fact, of the fact that it will be very expensive and it will be a, lot, a higher subscription cost because we cannot share the subscriptions, for example, on an OpenShift cluster they have to have their own uh, subscription. And, but yeah, they have a good, very good data, data isolation of it. And there is a good integration with the DCS as well. Although I have to mention, for example, that when we want to, this, uh, want to have a DCS, DCS integration with a uh, cloud installation, 
um, we just have one uh, part of our cluster running on-premise, which communicates via the Ditto API, via, through WebSocket, HTTP, MQTT, AMQP, to get the data in the, on, in the data sent in the on-premise again, and then provide it to the DCS. So it's more or less um, the same, uh, expect, expect for the fact that, except for the fact that the um, DCS integration is the only server or service running on-premise. And then we um, lower the installation cost based on how much you want to go into the cloud. Um, yeah, as I said before, we're trying to get as much as possible our customers into the cloud, uh, but that's not always the case and not always possible. So this is um, yeah, a nice overview of where we want to deploy. We want to deploy, uh, be able to deploy on all public clouds uh, uh, if possible, uh, and if not possible, just on bare metal. Uh, but uh, OpenShift for now is uh, standing just in the middle, and uh, we're trying to use that as a deployment, um, uh, yeah, deployment mechanism and deployment, uh, yeah, our deployment platform. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's about it. Um, so what is um, what are the key takeaways for our, for our IT platform? We want to prevent lock-in. Uh, our main entry points uh, publicly are Hono, Dito, and Forto, and they're open source, so you can reuse them or uh, implement them yourself. Uh, we are integrating multiple networks, of which uh, Dash 7 and LoRa 1 are two examples, uh, and, we, and we are focusing on it as well. But we're enabling third-party LoRa 1 as well. Um, then we want to normalize the sensor data so that uh, depending uh, that it does not depend on which sensor is sending the data, that it's, that it's different data or different structures. Um, we have a powerful digital twin API for uh, presenting all data. We will integrate a LoRaWAN server um, in the near future. And we want to, um, one of the reasons why, uh, why we are, uh, one of the key features we are different on is that we want to improve the device and the network monitoring on-premise as well. So that's something we differentiate on. Because of our focus on wireless uh, technology, we actually want to um, show to the customer how the network is performing, and we want to make sure that we can um, make suggestions on how to improve the network or change the network so its, it's application is really working better. Um, we also uh, are uh, analyzing all the data to make sure that we have a better quality of service for battery latency and scalability, um, including the LoRaWAN uh, services. So, um, yeah, and then we want to have an on-premise uh, deployment possibilities. So right now we have a solution, a uh, vertical solution, and we want to grow into a, a generic IoT platform. This is actually the goal for me as a backend developer. Uh, for Aluxi, we're trying to create the vertical so we get customers and get everything rolling, but the IoT platform is actually meant to be uh, broader and uh, meant to support a lot of use cases. Then some next steps for the sorry, IoT platform and maybe some Eclipse IoT projects. Uh, Hono, we would like to implement the LoRaWAN downlink adapter uh, in the Hono adapter. Uh, we want to have um, the, to normalize, as I said before, the data within Hono, so every data comes out of Hono exactly the same way. And we want to deploy InfiniSpan as well, uh, which is all, we're already in version one, I think, uh, but not yet deployed in our cluster. Uh, then for Dito, we want to have uh, the current and the desired state, so it gets autom automatically updated towards the device uh, via a downlink command. For Vorto, we want to deploy our own repository, to be honest, Last week I did the deploy, uh, but we want to incorporate it more. We want to have map more mapping. We want to have more normalizing uh, from Vorto. And then Aloxy itself internally, or maybe the managed API can be uh, made open source as well, depending on how generic we can create it. We want to create a management API and we have more alerting and monitoring, but that's internal um, things. Uh, if we go on premise, for example, then we need our own, yeah. Uh, so there is no specific reason, but if you go on premise, then we don't have a choice. <laughs> it wouldn't even allow to call out from such third parties. No. Like no. So in the chemical companies, they have what they call uh, sort of layers, mm -hmm. and um, data can go out of a layer, but can never come back, uh, just for security reasons. And the lowest level of data is, is uh, for example, vols. Uh, I'm just yeah, I'm just guessing right now, but the, the, the valve information, and once that valve information, for example, is that 
open, that is the open percentage right now. It won't come down, uh, for example, to say, oh, uh, we want to blink a lid because that's the valve you want you need to operate. No, that's not possible. So how do you keep the stall of water in the bottom hotter? Is that a big thing to do? Currently, it's just a YAML file, I think. Just install it on the on the in the cluster as well. It's just a Docker file. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fairly easy. Any more questions? Um, if I'm correct, um, Hogbit is indeed uh, a way to update um, your installation, but you have to do a, indeed the initial installation can be done with Hogbit. So it has a client running which pulls the server of Hogbit and then requests whether is there, there is an update or not. Um, second, um, as I thought, we were just talking about it um, yeah, a few seconds ago, um, it, it seems that you can uh, combine uh, Hogbit and um, IOFOC together and just Hogbit saying there is an update and use IOFOC to install the update on the device. But Standard Hogbit client for a device that you can use yeah. to install your software locally. Just you have to know how that is done yourself. So in that case, IOFOC comes into play because they know how to install the software on the on the agent. Yeah. So, so IOFOC runs as a client for Hogbit. Not really as a client, but it is integrated with Hogbit via their in backend integration yeah. API, and Hogbit controls the rollout via. Yeah, but we're not using it right now, so we're looking into it, and uh, we'll probably have this exact same question uh, later on. Yeah. Um, why did we do that? Good question. I don't know the reason right now. <laughs> I've looked into it. Um, I don't know, Glenn, do you know? Do you remember? So maybe for the rest of us, uh, we had some relational data and we wanted to join it as well. So we had some, uh, for example, when you're having a logical name, uh, which is only available in Ditto, we wanted to have it in the, in the Postgres database as well. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's part of the plan. Yeah, so we have the gateways on site. Uh, our own gateways on site can be updated via uh, Hogbit. And then, in some way, we should be able to uh, use Hogbit as well for the devices as well. But, yeah, we, as I said, we have to look into that and see what the possibilities are. Anything else? Okay, great. Thank you very much.